the more you explore, the more you realise that there's so much to it. It's one of those places that is fairly remote, especially in the UK. The UK is a tiny crowded island. It's very hard to get away. Dartmoor holds some of the most remote places within England and within the UK. If you put the effort in and you're prepared to, to hike or run, the only way is on foot, then you can just experience what most of us don't get to experience in our daily life, and that's the solitude, um, the feeling of actually being alone and the feeling of being remote uh, in a wild place that hasn't been completely pacified by the touch of man that doesn't have any conveniences and is pretty hard and is pretty rugged. There's a real sense of freedom with that and get away from all the nonsense of the, the modern world. And um, that feeling is, is hard to come by these days. It really is. So despite being a real avid trail runner and, and doing lots of runs out here on Dartmoor, I've never actually done the entire park north to south, across the park in one go. So I thought, you know, what better way to showcase the, the wonders of Dartmoor, to see some of the amazing sights. And for me personally, just to kind of get away and actually spend some time out on the moor, spend some time away from everything else and do the entire crossing in one go um, would be a real cool idea. Just started, glorious morning. It's pretty cold, it's about eight degrees. I got my arm warmers if I need them, but once I get moving, should warm up. Nice light wind, oh, what a view. What a view. So this is the very north tip of the moor. And from here, head due south. So I picked out a day where conditions looked good, but what actually happened was 48 hours before that, they had a whole month's worth of rain fall in 48 hours. And so the moor, which is just like this giant sponge, just soaked up all this water. And I have run across it in some wet conditions, but this was another level. There was so much standing water and it was so wet in places, um, it just made the going really tough. So challenging the terrain because it's so wet. It goes from kind of puddles to harder stuff to bits you've got to jump over, little bits of stream. A difference between a dry moor and a wet moor is massive in terms of how quickly you'll run across it. Um, it can really cut your pace down by 20, 30, 40% even. It's like running through sand effectively. So much more effort, saps your energy. Morning, Morning guys, how you doing? Wet enough for you? I know, <laughs> I'm just on the edge of the uh, firing range. You see here, there are the markers for the military firing range. And I'm okay today because there's no firing scheduled. So it's safe to be in this area. Even though they're not firing, they still advise you to watch out for 
unexploded ordnance that can get mislaid somewhere so if you see a metal thing poking up out the ground don't tread on it don't play with it You've got a couple of challenging little climbs at the beginning, the main one being up to Haggerstone Hill, which is sort of the first major climb on the north part of the moor. Just coming up to one of the highest points on the moor. It's about 600 meters, just under 2,000 foot. You've got great panoramic views the moor just expands in front of you and opens up and you've got that bleakness of the North Moor, you've got the hills and the tours in front of you and it just literally draws you in and I, I love starting a run in that way. There's two options here. One, you go straight that away, but that's how wet it is. And I know for a fact that that way, it's just pure marsh and bogland. So I'm gonna take a detour, which goes off and around this bog field. And I'm only actually trying to get about 500 meters that way. But by going this way, it's gonna be a lot easier. And that will just be waist deep within a matter of moments. I mean, let's just run out 100 yards see what it's like and as you can see it is they are deep box this hot one and look and then you're into the next and there's little ponds there could be that's chest deep even deeper. So that way is out. I head back to the army hut, cross, and then around. This is what's called a peat pass. And this here has been cut all the way down to the rock bed, all the way through the peat. And so this doesn't turn into a bog because the bottom of it is solid. But all the water still drains in here, but you can actually get through it without going in up to your neck. Traveling on foot, it's, it's the only way to experience Dartmoor. Um, you get a unique perspective. You're literally in it. You're up close. You get the full experience. And for me, running is one of my favorite things to do. It's beautiful in its simplicity, in the fact that it's one foot in front of the other in a forward direction and that's it. To be able to experience it that way with the, the joy of running and the joy of nature, you've got this kind of perfect combination of, of the two. And for me, there's, there's just literally no better way of doing it. It's hard to run really, really fast out here because of the terrain. So you do slow down and you, you do get a chance to experience and enjoy it. One of my favorite things about running on Dartmoor is how time seems to pass at a different rate. An hour on the road may feel like forever. Up here, two, three hours passes here in the same time as an hour in the real world, if you like. Even though you're working hard, your body's working hard, it's physical, the time passes at a lot quicker rate. I'm well past the four hour mark and really it feels like no time's passed at all. The miles and kilometers just seem to tick by. And I don't know whether that's because you've got ever-changing views. It's just beautiful to look at. 
if you've got the calm and serenity. Nice little flat section going across the road here and then into the forests for a little bit before we get out onto the wild of the southern moor. I think one word that's used quite a lot is bleak and bleak's got quite a negative connotation but actually there's a certain beauty associated with that, a certain emptiness and a certain wilderness that the moor has to offer certainly solitude as well it's so nice to be able to look as far as the eye can see and not see anything other than the moors and nature One of the features of the Southern Moor, a place called Red Lakes. You see these uh, excavations dug out for a mine and a quarry. And they're called Red Lake because the water is literally red. Turn that way from the iron deposits in the ground. Let's navigate across these rocks. Woo! Yeah. See all the way to the ocean, English Channel, Atlantic down there, it's the whole of South Devon, fantastic. Last descent, final bit, final stretch, finish up couple of k, a few miles, and then that's it. What a day to do it on. Amazing, just amazing. Phew. Ah. Ah. Oh, that's fun. So much fun. Oh, what a way to finish. Woo! I've been up here in all conditions, uh, at all times of year, when I've been in good moods, when I've been in bad moods, and I've never once regretted coming here. It's always given me something and it always calls me back. I know that I'll be coming here for as long as I'm around and I'll always be enjoying it because it's just such a magical place. <laughs>